Oh my god, what is, what is this in front of us? On the mini-map? It's, it's visible. HOLY what SHIT! It? Look at this mini-map! What the f- There is no more peace on the- How long has Dom been in this game? How long, chat? Look at it! Look at it! Look at it! You can actually see it! GG. Thank you, Naveed. Now it's gonna be invisible on Viridian Bog. Hey, what's going on guys? Phil here and welcome back to some patch notes. It is August 22nd, 2023 and we're going to go dive in here because this is actually a pretty important patch as it introduces three new weapon systems to the game that we previously don't have and that is uh, X-Pulse lasers, binary uh, laser cannons, uh, and uh, hags. Uh, yes, you heard me. Hags are now in the games. Hag 40, uh, Hag 30, and Hag 20 and then binary, uh, which are basically large lasers. Uh, two of them combined, and then large X-Pulse, medium X-Pulse, and small X-Pulse. Not only that, we have uh, some new legendary mechs, uh, and we have some more stuff to cover that's pretty important. So let's go ahead and dive in here. I'm just going to give you my initial impressions on this, and we're going to go ahead and go through the list. So uh, if you guys aren't aware of what's going on, you will be. Uh, obviously, two new legendary mechs, a um, bunch of adjustment, quirk adjustments, gameplay adjustments, so forth. Um, another big important part is MWO Comp Championship Series. Uh, comp queue has been open for the teams uh, to be created. Uh, and this is the month uh, we have the first matches kicking off, uh, as well as the new Tournament Supporter Pack. I'm going to be covering the tur Tournament Supporter Pack in another video. I will say this about the TSP. It's always worth supporting the TSP. Not only does it help you with C-Bills, uh, which it's a good value always, you, generally speaking. I've never not got it for $10. But there's more to it this year, and I'll cover that in another video, so make sure to check that out. But it's always great, too, because it helps the price pool for the tournament. So, again, if you want to help, uh, you know, uh, the, the winners uh, for a second and third, uh, check that out. And, again, like I said, I think the value's there. Um, let's go ahead and jump in here. The first thing uh, uh, is that binary layers, uh, lasers right now, you heard me, binary lasers, um, are supposed to have a, a host state uh, or heat scale limit of two and they're able to fire right now with three they're monitoring it it's scheduled for the next patch but via darren uh on um on my stream uh he basically said they're they're monitoring this if it gets out of control which it i think it will be my initial feelings are it would be uh they're gonna possibly look at a hot fix uh or else we're gonna have a month of just binary laser spam all right let's go ahead dive into uh jay-z's mech um that's what i'm just going to call it i'm not going to call it by its name the war emu um these were actually uh showcased over on um a stream last weekend over on ash's stream uh with one of the new uh devs teos um and they talked about the the war emu and this is a legendary uh stalker you guys have been wanting a ballistic stalker i don't understand you stalker fanatics you guys are i don't i just don't get you i don't the obsession that you guys have with this thing i don't understand it but again teach his own you guys it's yours there now you get a legendary and it's here uh my initial impressions on this it is a uh four ballistic five energy and two missile that's right five or four ballistic five energy two missile um what to say about the stalker all high mounts uh 85 tonner that has plenty of uh you know uh, payload to be able to bring to bear um uh, on top of that it's got a good silhouette good hit boxes uh it does look like a dinosaur and in this case i'm just not a fan of the paint scheme i hmm, but again it's a war emu so maybe that's why but uh i'm sure you guys are happy out there um some things to note about this like i said the the um, hard points you can see here basically one ballistic and a missile in each arm uh one ballistic one energy in the left right torso two energy in the ct and one in the head if you look at these pictures they're all high mounts even the ballistics in the arms uh, they are high mounts now even with all of, uh you know uh, basically even if you don't take the missile, you can see the missile would be lower here. Uh, all high mounts. Basically, if you can see it, you can shoot it and probably hit it. So uh, the Stalker performs really well. It's been a, a performer. Now, as far as quirks are concerned, they just released these today. It is patch day. And this basically doesn't have really any quirks. Uh, it's got some left, right torso and CT armor. That's what you get. And you get C-Bill boost uh, from it. So this legendary um, is... Um, 
I I actually don't know what special quirk it's supposed to have. I thought these were supposed to have something uh, unique about the legendary quirk. So I'll have to like find out more about that because it, it's maybe it's yeah. I don't really know. I don't really what what is this supposed to? It's got nothing. Isn't this supposed to have something unique as far as a quirk? I don't know. Anyways. I'll update uh, as soon as I can on that. But as far as the, the mech is concerned, it looks like it'll be a good performer. It's a stalker. It's got ballistics. Jay-Z's happy. And for everybody else, it doesn't matter because Jay-Z is the only one followed by Evan Golis, who also likes the stalker. So um, let's go ahead and move on to the next one. And this uh, might pique your interest. Um, the scale shot. This is a Viper. Now, you're also going to see a lot of missiles because that's what this does. This brings a 40 tonner uh, with uh, missiles in the left right torso, its little claws. Um, it looks like a little dinosaur. That's what it looks like. I really I dig the look of it. I remember when uh, Alex was doing the artwork for this. Uh, again, very reminiscent of an attack helicopter. He actually used that as a reference. What does this have? What does this bring? This brings six Missile, hard points, three in the left and right torso, and one energy in the CT. What does this have, Phil, uh, that uh, is so important? Well, it has uh, six SRM-4s, which also means you can do some fun stuff with uh, sixes uh, or, in this case, streaks, but has SRM-4s, six SRM-4s, and a uh, small pulse laser uh, by default. So that sort of gives you an idea of what you're going to be working with. Um, as we scroll down here, this is an Omni mech, uh, or uh, is it an Omni? Yes, it is an Omni. Uh, so you're going to be able to uh, switch this around. They didn't go the HAL route. Um, so obviously you could do the ballistics and the arms as well and energy um, with this. So um, what does this have for uh, quirks? Well, um, it's got the C-Bill bonus, the XP bonus, um, which... Let me scroll up here really quick. This is missing the XP bonus, or, or I guess that's for the set of eights. Anyways, uh, I digress. Uh, it's actually got missile range, missile spread, missile velocity, and of course, heat. Um, it's got also clan SRM ammo capacity. So as you saw there, uh, it comes with the default of three tons of ammo. It's basically equivalent of like uh, six tons of ammo. Um, now, what's also interesting with this uh, is the set of eight quirks. And I'm actually going to showcase this uh, really quick. So let's go ahead and check it out in game really quick because I, I feel like you need to see what I'm talking about. This is something that's new that you need to be aware of. Okay, here we are into the mech lab. Now I am mousing over the center torso and we are all familiar with set of eight quirks. Set of eight quirks, for those that are unaware, is if you have all eight Omnipods, on a particular uh, Omni mech, you get usually bonuses. Those bo bonuses vary as far as quirks. Some of it is uh, minor, some of it is pretty big. Now, if you'll notice, we have additional stuff here. We have a four piece Omnipod set, six piece Omnipod set, and eight piece as well. So it looks like what they're basically doing is uh, if you take these on, for instance, um, you take the arms off and you put ballistic uh, arm omnipods, you're still going to get this six pod uh, bonus. You can then switch out and only have four of these and you're still going to get that bonus. I actually think this is a really smart idea because there's really strong omnipods that um, you know don't really need as much and there's weaker ones. And with this, what you can do is you can sort of hot swap and play around with it and come up with the unique combos. So I actually think this is a really cool idea. Um, so this is one of the first mechs that sort of gets that. Um, I don't know if they're expanding that. I will ask the devs about this if this is going to expand to other uh, Omnimax, I hope so. I think this is a really cool thing. And again, it can sort of incentivize with some uh, uh, changes, uh, being able to mess around with different om Omnipod combos. Okay, so we've uh, uh, gone through the new Legendary Mix. Let's talk about the new weapons. I talked about uh, uh, at the very beginning, we have new weapons. Now, I adore this. I think the Civil War tech was probably the biggest update to the game in like recent history. I think it added a lot of longevity and life and options to players and builds. Um, old mechs became new and so forth. So new weapons are always great. Um, we've got the uh, X-Pulse lasers, the binary uh, laser cannon, and of course HAGs. Um, I'll go ahead and showcase some footage here, uh, but let's go ahead and talk about the uh, Hyper Assault Goss. We have three flavors here. We've got the Ag 40, 
the HAG 30 and the HAG 20. Now they're sort of a mid range. I mean, optimal is 810, which is long range, but they're going to be competing with uh, ultra auto cannons, which is going to be interesting. It'll it'll be interesting how they go. Um, now they do follow the same principle as Gauss rifles, which is you can only fire two at any given time. The moment your almost year old daughter loses her cool in the background. So these do apply um, uh, as the rules per the Gauss rifle. They also, um, it applies for any ammo quirks that apply to Gauss rifles. Uh, this applies. So if it's a Gauss rifle ammo, it applies to this. Um, same thing with ammo nodes and all, and it, it follows the same rules. You can only fire two at a time. So just sort of keep that in mind. All right, let's go ahead and check out the HAG 40, the HAG 30 and the HAG 20. The nice thing is all of them use the same ammo, so you don't have to worry about that. Um, and uh, again, they still apply the same rules. You can only fire two at the same time, but in this case, I'm just gonna go ahead and fire. They all sound the same. They all like look the same, so let's go check them out. And again, just like Gauss Rifle, they do have a charge mechanic. As you can see, all use the same sound effects. There's nothing different there. And what we'll do is we'll charge up uh, two at the same time. We'll do the Hag 30 and 40. Now, what we'll do is we'll fire. Um, they do have different uh, stats. As you can see, the 30 is a little bit faster cooldown than the 40, and same thing with the 20 and 30. We'll go ahead and switch over here. All right, so there you have it with the HAGs. It's going to be really interesting. Again, uh, a really powerful weapon system. It is competing with the UAX. It sort of is in that same light, uh, Gauss rifle versus uh, having multiple rounds there. Uh, one thing off the top of my head is the ability to place all those shots in the same location. Uh, higher skill players are going to be able to do that and deliver a lot of damage. Um, and it does come with higher tonnage and more slots as well. So um, limiting factor is going to be physical space. The HAG-40 is only able to go on uh, mechs that don't have, especially on the arms, only on mechs that don't have a lower arm actuator, uh, which isn't a problem with clan mechs, but it is a problem with clan battle mechs that may have that um, slot just taken and you can't remove it like an Omni mech. So just sort of keep that in mind. Some mechs like the um, Mark II uh, Deathstrike don't have that lower arm, so you don't have to really worry about it. So whereas on Omni, you can remove it so you can uh, do that. Uh, binary lasers and large pulse, we'll go ahead and check them out. All right, first up, we're going to check out the large X pulse lasers, and I have this mounted in the left horse of the cicada. So let's go ahead and get a visual of what it looks like, how quickly the fire rate. I'm just holding down the trigger button right here. All right, we're going to switch over to the medium X pulse now in the right torso. And of course, the X small pulse. Now, what does this look like when you're inside is you can see the, the heat now and all the visuals. Okay, we're going to be checking out the binary laser cannons now. Uh, these were just introduced. We're going to go ahead and fire one at a time, give you an idea of what it sounds like and what it looks like. Keep in mind this is with full duration nodes and full cooldown as well. I'll go ahead and show you what it looks like on the outside here. And one more time as we cool off here. Heat level critical. Heat level critical. Enemy mech destroyed.
All right, so really strong uh, options for the inner sphere. I think what this is going to offer us is um, sort of a counter to the heavy large laser and the large X pulse is gonna be unique. I My predictions are really strong at uh, poke play and sort of getting behind enemy lines, maybe lights, uh, mediums that are that harass a roll, you leave them uh, enough and it's going to be a problem uh, them getting on your flank. As far as the binary uh, goes, really, really powerful right now. As I mentioned before, I think they might be a little bit broken. You're only supposed to be able to fire two without ghost heat. Right now you can fire three. Um, they are going to uh, potentially hot fix that. So we'll keep an eye on that. But as far as the overall weapon system, as I mentioned before, I think more options are better. Again, uh, you've got really super high DPS, but low alpha. And then on the other side, you've got the high damage like binary lasers, but bit a lot more tonnage and crit space so uh two very distinct uh, uh options there all right let's go ahead and move on to weapon adjustments this may be controversial let me know in the comments down below uh some changes to lrms specifically clint and is not just one side and it, it impacts all lrm 5 through 20. missile speed is reduced to 190 meters a second from 210 this change affects the direct fire speed at the same percentage that's obviously going to be a change you think some people think lrms are in a bad place right now and honestly i think there's something to be said about that i know i talked to navid uh, he believes LRMs are more of a team weapon, but the problem is you don't always get that team environment when you're dropping solo and or even if you're dropping as a group and that's in a weird place, but they're in a weird place because direct fire and indirect fire are linked. So just sort of keep that in mind and gets into in information sharing and target info sharing and so forth. I think LRMs are in a weird spot and if you reduce one or buff something, it's, I feel like that's a, podcast that needs to happen so maybe we make that happen i'm just reporting don't sorry if you like lrms you're getting a slight nerf um and one of the uh things that is a little bit confusing with this is recently talking to navid is that he said the biggest impact on uh making ams more effective um uh is giving ams more range so it can start shooting um the missiles this also uh, impacts it because it slows the missiles down, giving AMS a little bit uh, more time to engage as well. So maybe if we saw a little bit of both uh, there, but I think uh, LRMs are in a weird place right now. So I, I do agree. Uh, I think they can be abused, but regardless, we'll get in a podcast with that one. Um, streak four, clan and IS, increased minimum heat penalty uh, limit to five um, from four. Can fire four with no penalty. Uh, are streaks broken? Are streaks bad? Are streaks good? That's a uh, topic. I uh, recently ran them for a while and made a video and had a lot of comments saying basically they're in a bad spot. I tend to agree and the main reason being is there's so much ECM, especially when there's dual ECM around you, even if you have a BAP or CAP. Uh, streaks are in a weird place. I think they can be good, but I will say uh, shooting, even if it's six SRM uh, streak SRM sixes, um, you don't want them to instantly delete lights. But on the other hand, um, shooting a whole volley seems like getting hit with a weight, uh, wet paper bag and it does do damage, but mm, yeah. So anyways, that's another topic that I'd like to have with Navid. Let's talk about mech agility, uh, adjustments. The Banshee 3S agility stats have been changed to similar to the rest of the Banshee, increase in Excel, DXL, and turn rate. Um, and again, pretty uh, pretty nice little uh, change there. Nothing significant, uh, nothing maybe you might notice if you uh, don't play them often, but if you do play the Banshee 3S, you are gonna notice it. Uh, more uh, mech adjustments, Rifleman 3N energy weapon on the arms now use higher secondary arm uh, hard point. This is actually really good. Again, um, a lot of the issues of cockpit level and if you have lower hard points hitting the dirt so this is a good thing uh rifleman 8d and 5d energy weapons on the arms now prioritize higher secondary arm hard point than lower and the same thing it's pretty much all of them all all this is better this is just basically it prioritizes that that top slot or at least higher slot so it's pretty much uh good now this is going to be controversial um Skill tree adjustments, enhanced ECM skill nodes, node values for clan mechs only are reduced 16.5 from 20%. What does this mean for you? If I take a Timberwolf and I have ECM 
Uh, and this is considering I go up against a mech that doesn't have any sensor skills and or uh, BAP or anything that improves its radar range. This basically means you'll be detectable at 248 meters versus 200 and below meters. Um, this is a very subtle change. I don't think it has a big impact uh, and, and sweeping changes. I did talk to Navid and I heard his opinion on this. They're wanting to make changes to ECM and I think they're wanting to do this incrementally. I think uh, ECM has been broke since its introduction. I don't know if they're looking at changing the uh, just detection range on it altogether down the road. Maybe they'll slowly decrease it more and more. I'm of the opinion, uh, pull off the band-aid, uh, but I'm also wondering if they're gonna see possibly of getting a mechanic change to where when you're standing out in the open, which I remember there was a PTS that we did years ago that had this mechanic is when you move out in the open, if you're there for X amount of time, you then get locked on. So basically it just, re it, it, re ECM would reduce the, or, or increase the lock on time of like detection time. Um, so it's not a, if you're out in the open, you're just, you can't be locked on at all. It's over a period of time. If someone has a visual, you'll, you know, you're, You'll be lockable. I don't know if they're going that route. Um, this is also only affecting Clan Max, not IS. So 200 to 248. Now that does not include if the Mac has radar uh, nodes on sensors or has a piece of equipment increases or a uh, sensor um, uh, quirk as well. There are Macs that have sensor quirks. So that 248 value could drastically be, uh, you know, 300. 350 um, but this is the first time we've seen ecm nerfs um, i do like the direction that's going um, that being said um, it would be interesting to hear a little bit more about that so i'll reach out let's talk about magazine capacity skill nodes nodes now provide plus eight rounds for the hags which uh, is a no-brainer it's an ammo based weapon just like uh, all the others um Gameplay adjustments. Mech HUD. This is actually a really big one. Components on the player and enemy paper down now flash twice quickly, taking only 0.5 seconds before updating the color of the paper doll, giving the player information about the self or enemy damage status much quicker. Current paper doll components flash three times, taking one and a half seconds before updating the damage status. Now, we're going to go ahead and take a quick look at this. As you can see, I mean, this is a big impact on gameplay. Uh, it's been one of those things where it can be really frustrating um, as your paper doll, like you could die before sometimes even your paper doll updates. Uh, so this is across the board. This is actually a really, really nice change. Uh, it's a quality of life one that, um, you know, unfortunately we didn't get a long time ago. I'm glad it's going in. So kudos to whoever, again, as I said earlier, uh, kudos to whoever made this happen. It's, it's, it's a good change. So um all right let's move on to the next one and that's the domination circle indicator on the minimap and battleground now use a clear green color with distinct outlines for better visibility on wide range maps uh we don't have a picture here um and i can't really show it without getting a lobby unfortunately so uh if i can if i get a image i'll put it in here so um that's awesome i mean maps like caustic are probably the biggest culprits for this um, it's one of those things where because the yellow pea stain, as we call it, the dom circle is yellow and the map textures are yellow. You don't really see, uh, the dom circle on caustic. It's probably the worst, uh, offender out there. Um, but again, I like this, a little clear green color with a distinct outline. So that's, that's good. All right, let's move on to the mech quirk adjustments. I'm going to go ahead and sort of briefly go through these. I'm not going to go through all of them because there's a huge list, uh, but it says clan mechs and omnipods with existing ammo bonuses. Uh, all variants with existing ammo bonuses quirks include hag ammo bonus per ton um, in ammo bonus groups, consistent percentage. So um, the big thing here is that because of the, on the IS side, because of the uh, energy changes, you see a lot of, uh, you know, for instance, the fire starter remove 15% medium laser range and you just get 15% medium laser family range. What does that allow? That allows you to take medium X pulse, medium lasers, medium pulse lasers, uh, ER mediums, and it get the bonus here. So instead of it being a specialized quirk, I'd say generalized quirk. So this is just a family across the board, all medium lasers regardless of their their acronym, um, it gets the bonus. And you're going to see that a lot. Same thing right here, the Raven uh, 2X. 
Um, this is actually a good thing. I think there's a place for spe specialization and there's a time for generalization. Um, if you want to push a build in a, a, a very in a specific direction, that's where you do the specialization. If you want it to have a little bit more freedom, uh, that's where you do the general. Um, now you're going to see some other stuff happen here. The adders are getting a lot of love here. Uh, you can see the Phoenix Hawk is getting a complete redux here. It's actually losing, as I said, Quirks, 100 meter sensor range. So again, going back to what I was saying earlier about the ECM change, this Phoenix 1 would have been able to detect you uh, before the 248. It, I don't have the math right in front of me, but that, that change is happening. Uh, the Phoenix Hawks are getting a lot of changes here. Again, um, not to like uh, sit and go through every single one. Uh, some of them are getting very, very big ones. Uh, changes again if you look at cooldown cooldown it's just giving blanket cooldown instead of it being weapon or um, a hard point specific so this is a it's a good thing in a way because it allows you to take any weapon and get that bonus uh, and also declutters the the quirks as well so the amount of as you can see uh, uh, inputs that you have you can just get down to like that or whatever so um, uh, we do notice some other stuff like target info gathering speed. That's basically how quickly you can lock on and get the paper doll information for those that don't know. We also see stuff like HSL uh, for lasers. Uh, so the 1K being able to take more lasers. It's not a heavy, it's not a medium light or uh, you know large. Um, it's just laser. So stuff like this, you definitely want to pay attention. Um, we got a lot of science to do. Um, across the board, we have a lot of quirk changes here. As you can see, some of these have to do with uh, ballistic, and they're switching these to just uh, cooldown and spread. Um, changes across the board, uh, lots of stuff. Um, another thing is bug uh, fixes, fixed to typo in the laser family HSL quirk names, generic UAC uh, jam chance quirk now shows UAC jam chance um, instead of just jam chance. And ECM uh, skill nodes no longer apply to stealth armor cooldown bonuses to clan mechs which don't have access uh, to this armor. Um, man, so what are my thoughts about this patch? This is actually a really, really big patch, and I'm, I'm, I'm liking, again, the highlights. We got new weapon systems. Uh, we got the, uh, the paper doll information. I think that's huge. Uh, the weapon systems in itself is going to change the game up. You're going to see a lot of experimentation. Um, I'd like to see this expanded, maybe Thunderbolts, uh, maybe uh, indirect, not indirect, direct fire thunderbolts like mech, maybe mech four um and again uh, it really just depends on what pgi wants to do um they did basically say this is their first round uh if this uh if this goes well with the new weapons um they are planning on doing more i know the list isn't huge um but there is quite a lot of weapons they could do that i think fit would fit mwo um, obviously we got the two new legendary mechs. Uh, the last two, uh, were a little bit, um, lackluster, but having this come into the game, as far as the new weapon systems, the, uh, and you know, all energy annihilator and the ballistic, uh, Godzilla. Now you can see where some of these changes might've been made as far as not giving them, uh, quirks or why they got specific stuff. So, uh, overall, I think this is a huge, uh, patch. I think, uh, people that haven't played in a while would probably come back to experiment science and stuff. New weapons again are always good. Uh, new equipment would be good as well. So overall, um, really excited about this patch and getting in here. So anyways, guys, that's going to be it. Let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. Um, are you interested in the legendary mechs? Um, the new weapons, are you excited? Uh, what are your thoughts on the LRMs in the current state and streaks? Um, are you in agreement that ECM and maybe even like radar derp? Um, I believe radar derp is another topic I'd like to, to dive into. Um, I think those two have fundamentally changed the game. Now, before you guys lose your mind and say, learn apocalypse, I'm in agreement where any changes to those systems, you do also have to make adjustments to indirect fire capabilities. But I think those three things being all tied into each other is something that we can have a conversation. So let me know down in the comments down below. What are your thoughts on these topics? Are you happy with the weapons? What weapons would you like to see? And again, just let me know in the description and comments down below. I'll see you guys on the next video. And again, speaking of uh, you know videos, I do post on here. I do live streams if you haven't checked. Uh, twitch.tv forward slash ngngtv and also on mondays we are doing our stream over on kick 
So if you didn't know about Kick, it's kick.com forward slash NGNG TV. I'll have a link down below. Uh, we've been streaming over there as well, new platform, and that is only on Monday. So again, if you haven't been over there and want to support what I do here, uh, just go drop a follow, show up, uh, interact, and I will see you guys over there. So until next time.